Ooh, my heart is beating really, really fast. But it's good. It's, uh, it beats with passion. And um, I'm very honored to be able to receive this amazing award from the, de- from, from the depths of... Listen, y'all, this is not a joke. I want to read you something in Revelations that Brother Klaus showed me the other night. All right, Revelations 18, and we'll start our verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet, all thin and wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood of brass and iron and marble. Watch this and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. It says the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn because no man buys their merchandise anymore. And one of the things listed is souls of man. We talk all the time about, you know what, people in the music industry selling their soul to the devil. Now, some people say, well, God is in control of all souls, so you cannot sell your soul to the devil, but more so you can come into covenant. Satan tempted Jesus and said, look, if you do this, I'll do this and I'll give you this. And so with a lot of people in this world, right, Satan is pretty much saying, look, I'll give you this. I'll give you the fame. I'll give you the money. I'll give you all the women or whatever it is that you want. I'll give you the security. I'll give you the position, right? If you just push this agenda, if you push this antichrist agenda, if you sell your soul, right? If you, we see like all these, you know, people talking about these humiliation rituals. What was the most recent one? John Cena um, and, a, and a, you know, a lot of artists, they're putting on dress or actors and things like that. All this weird stuff. And we know what part of that, you know, agenda is. But you got to understand, guys, like I've been saying for years, it's not just entertainment. Like we are in a spiritual battle. Now, what you see is the result of, you know, just it being exposed in the physical, but there's a war that is going on in the spiritual. And that's why you can't just sit there and just watch anything and just open your your eye gates, your ear gates to listen to anything, right? You're like, oh man, this beat is really nice. You know, and even if you feel sometimes like, oh, well, the music is kind of clean, you just, you have to be careful, right? Because we know that there's a spirit behind it. If it's not of the spirit of God, it's of the spirit of this world, bottom line. And the Bible talks about the gods of this world, right? There's no way around it. Like we serve God and they serve the gods of this world. And so everything that they produce, you know what I'm saying, is from Babylon, right? Now we have to live in Babylon. And I've preached this message before about how God wants us to thrive and survive in the midst of Babylon. Uh, But just because we have to live in Babylon doesn't mean that we have to allow Babylon in, uh, in us, right? Just because we live in Babylon doesn't mean that we have to assimilate and allow Babylon to be in us and to affect, you know, our minds and our hearts. And and really with the kids, man, that the music, listen, you know, a lot of these young guys will say, well, there was, you know, bad music back in the day and stuff. Let me, it was more, it was more hidden. You, you had to look for it, right? It was kind of understood like, you know, this is some kind of adult content. Now it's just out there. It's everywhere. You know, kids are singing it in schools and, and, and it's just it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And so the enemy has gained a lot of ground. The enemy has gained a lot of traction. I will say this. I do believe that we are, you know, we've been going like this as a society, just down, down, down. And I believe that we're about to hit a season where we're going to level out and we're going to start going up. And God is going to allow the kingdom to build right in the midst of Babylon. He's going to allow us to build. And then uh, after that, right, we're going to build, we're going to prepare, and then it's really going to get bad. You know, so my advice to you is to just really be praying, really be seeking God, really be in your word. We're clearly living in the end times. Now is not the time to play around with God, straddle the fence, you know, have one foot in Babylon and one foot in the church, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. You better be all the way in. Either you're a citizen of the kingdom are you a citizen of Babylon? And I, you know, I preached about this a couple of weeks ago about Moses. You know, he knew there was something in him. He knew like, I don't, I don't belong in the palace. And the Bible says he went out and he saw his brethren and he killed the Egyptian. But it says first he looked left and he looked right. He said, let me see, because 
Let me see if I could do my assignment. Let me see if I could kill this Egyptian and still live in the palace, still live in the comfort of the palace, right? I, I, I want to be who I'm supposed to be, but I want to go back to the palace. I don't want to lose my, my comfort. I don't want to lose my position. No, God wants us to come all the way out of the palace, all the way out of the world and be separate. All right. And so Moses had to come out the palace all the way in the wilderness, have an encounter with God. But one thing I'll tell you, if, if Moses was to walk in this room right now and, you know, living in the palace was nice. But if you ask him, you know, what was the best day of your life? He would probably say the best day of my life was when I was <clears throat> running in the wilderness for my life and I encountered God at the burning bush. They probably had a lot of fun stuff to do in the palace back then. But he would tell you, you know, the best day of my life, I was running through the wilderness and boom, I encountered God and he changed my life. And so in order, that for, in order for that to happen, he had to come all the way out of the palace. God wants you to be separate. He wants you to be holy. He don't want you to live like the world. Come out of Babylon. Go to www.marcusrogersministries.org uh, if you want to partner and support what we're doing here in Chicago. It's greatly appreciated. We need all the help that we can get. God bless.